So, I've never played Skyrim. That is 13 years without ever seeing a spoiler. In between all my twitchy reaction gameplay and bloodlust, I thought I needed a small break. So, in true furry fashion, I had a terrible idea. I'm gonna play the entire thing, or, you know, at least most of it. Considering this is a Bethesda game, installing it was pretty easy. But you also have to consider that this is a Bethesda game. So I installed a few bug fixes and vanilla mods because we fuck with that vanilla experience. So like any player wanting to start a new game, I select new game and the game immediately crashes my entire PC. Fuck. You, finally awake. Oh, so that's where this meme is from. Inspiring. So my first few minutes spent on this grand adventure involved me fumbling around in the settings longer than this ride lasts. Hearing and listening are not some of my strong suits, so I need those subtitles. A wise man knows when to shut up. A wiser man will simply ignore you. <laughs> Guess which one I am. Four dudes sitting in a car going to an undisclosed location because we're not gay, I think. But I learned very quickly that the people of Skyrim could give less of a fuck about the gay agenda. Yes, my old nemesis, character creation. And no, I didn't pick Nord because I'm already boring in real life. Like a true man of culture, I picked Argonian. I've only heard one thing about this game, and that's the lustful Argonian maid, and I'll be damned if it's not me. She's beautiful. I feel Bonita. With a pretty face must also come a pretty name. It's a pun. <laughs> With my newfound beauty, I bat my eyelashes and stare death in its eyes. That was fucking terrifying. Okay, racist. Oh wow, it's a dragon. What do you see? This doesn't seem too bad. I think we're fine. Never mind. I know I've only seen it for five seconds, but I can tell me and this dragon have a unique personality. We're both loud and we love making new friends. This is exactly what a furry room party looks like, and no, I will not elaborate. After I jump from this tower and break my legs, I shamble through the charred remains of strangers and their houses. If this was a tutorial for your first time visiting Chicago, this is 100% what it would look like. He gets a 10 on the initial jump, but a zero on the landing. This game is fucking awesome. If you're wondering why I'm in the keep with Hadvar instead of Rawolf, it's because I blatantly ignored that there was a choice. Time and time again, my Stockholm Syndrome wins. It's at this point, I can finally experience Bethesda's outdated definition of gameplay. 
Left click to attack, right click to block. That's it. If the combat system was any deeper, it'd at least be a puddle, but then I'd have something to talk about. It wasn't long before I wandered into what seemed to be an AA meeting and was promptly attacked for my sobriety. Always remember, alcoholism kills, but that's never gonna stop me from stealing every bottle of alcohol and then immediately drinking it. I'd say there was more to show between escaping Helgen, going to Riverwood and Whiterun and killing my first dragon, but that footage turned out to be corrupted and I lost all four hours of it. This, however, was a blessing in disguise. Those four hours contained the most engaging fetch quests I've ever played. And by engaging, I mean they were really fucking boring. One thing did survive though. I met a giant for the first time. Game play. Suffice to say, he was kind enough to let me off with a warning. But now, it's time to go back to the main storyline. Stand between us and prepare yourself. Few can withstand the unbridled voice of the Greybeards, but you are ready. You have to teach it your training, Dragon. I have become literate. With my training complete, I venture out into the open air of Skyrim. But what the Greybeards failed to mention to me was how fun it would be to speak dragon. And if Skyrim is a class-based system, consider my enemies systemically oppressed. It's time to take the fight to the dragons. That was actually pretty cool, I can't lie. But if you're like me, you're probably asking, what the fuck is happening? I'm glad you asked because I barely know either. My gameplay up to this point has been walking in a single direction and then killing what's ever in front of me. But since this is a single player role playing story experience, I will try to explain to the best of my knowledge. Dragons are supposed to be dead, but as you can clearly see, they just got better. All thanks to the big man upstairs, Alduin. He also wants to destroy the entire world or something. Luckily for Skyrim, that's where I come in. Only a dragonborn can defeat him. I'm glad we're up to speed because this is where I stopped doing the main story for the time being. I needed something a little less on the nose. Hey guys, so welcome to Elden Ring. <laughs> Saving the world got a little boring, so I decided to take a little vacation. A little birdie told me about a group who calls themselves the Dawn Guard. They hunt vampires. Now, why did I decide to become a vampire hunter? The answer is actually quite simple. I have a strong dislike for the vitamin D deficient. One might even say I'm a little vampire phobic. But how did I get this way? Well, I was going on like any other day before a courier delivered me a message. It was an invitation to a dinner party. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm never going to turn down free food because I'm a greedy fuck. And so, my road trip began. But not before I was attacked by a dragon after the cart rider ensured me that it was safe. In my hubris, I should have known, no one invites you to free food for free food. It was a setup! And I was not equipped for the situation. But who are you to say I didn't try? 